Hi, in the previous videos you've learned how to quickly look up name in your phone book given the phone number. And we want to learn to solve the reverse problem. Given a name, look up a phone number of the corresponding person. To do that we need to implement the map from names to phone numbers. And we can again use hash tables and we can again use chaining as in the previous sections, but we need to design a hash function that is defined on names. And more generally, we want to learn to hash arbitrary strings of characters. And by the way, in this video you will also learn how hashing of strings is implemented in the Java programming language. But first, let's introduce a new notation. Denote by s enclosed in vertical lines the length of string s. For example, the length of string a is 1, length of string a, b is 2, and length of string a, b, c, d, e is 5. So now, how to hash strings? Well, when we are given a string, we are actually given a sequence of characters. From s0 to s length of s minus 1, we number the characters of the strings from 0 in this lecture. And s of i is an individual character that is in the i position in the string. I state that we should use all the characters when we compute our hash function of a string. Indeed, if we don't use the first character, there will be many collisions. For example, if the first symbol of the string is not used, then the hash value of strings AA, BA and so on up to ZA will be the same, because however we compute the value of the hash function, it doesn't use the value of the first character, and if everything else in the string stays the same and only change the first character that doesn't influence the value of the hash function, then the value of the hash function must be the same. And so there will be a lot of collisions and we want to avoid collisions. So we need to use value of each of the characters. Now we could do a lot of things with that. For example, sum the values of all the characters or multiply them, but we will do something different. Well, first, to even compute something on a string, we need to convert each character of the string to an integer code. For example, that can be ASCII code or Unicode corresponding to that symbol on your computer. That doesn't really matter. And also, we will again need to choose a big prime number p, the same as we used in the integer hashing. So, suppose we've chosen some big prime number p. Now, we introduce a new family of hash functions called polynomial family of hash functions. So calligraphic p is the family of hash functions which is indexed by small p which is our big prime number and also indexed by x and x is a parameter which changes from 1 to p minus 1. And so the value of a hash function indexed by p and x on a string s is the following sum. It is a polynomial sum where we multiply the integer code corresponding to the i-th character of s, we denote it by s of i, the same as the character itself, we multiply it by x to the power of i, we sum all these things up, and we take the value modulo p. So this is a family of hash functions, and the cardinality of all those hash functions is p. So any such hash function returns value from 0 to p minus 1. And how many hash functions are there in this family? Well, of course, there are exactly p minus 1 different hash functions, because to choose to define a hash function from this family, we just need to choose the value of x. And x changes from 1 to p minus 1, and it's an integer number, of course. So how can we implement a hash function from this family? So the procedure polyhash, which takes as input string s, prime number p and parameter x implements the hash function from our family. It starts with assigning value of 0 to the result, to the hash value we will return in the end, and then it will go from right to left in our string and compute new value based on the value of the corresponding character. And there is a formula in the code that does exactly that. 
and uh, I will show you by example that what we get in the end by applying this formula is exactly what we want. So basically we start with a hash value of zero and then we start with i equal to two if the length of our string s is three we start with length of s minus one which is two. We have current value of hash equal to zero so we multiply this zero by x and get zero then we add the value of s of i which is s of two and take it modulo p and so after first iteration of the for loop we get s of 2 modulo p. What happens is the next iteration is that i is decreased and i is now 1 and we multiply the current value s of 2 by x and we add s of 1 and take everything modulo p and what we get is the same as s of 1 plus s of 2 multiplied by x modulo p and in the last iteration i is decreased to 0 we multiply the current value by x and what we get is s of 1 multiplied by x plus s of 2 multiplied by x squared. And then we also add s of 0 to the sum and take everything modulo p. And the result is s of 0 plus s of 1 multiplied by x plus s of 2 multiplied by x squared. Exactly as we wanted, a polynomial hash function with prime p and parameter x. And by the way, the implementation of the built-in hash code method in the class string in Java is very similar to our procedure polyhash. The only difference is that it always uses x equal to 31, and for some technical reasons it avoids the modulo p operator. It just computes the polynomial sum without any modular division. So now you know how a function that is used probably trillions of times a day by thousands and many thousands of different programs, how this function is implemented. So now about the efficiency of our polynomial family. First lemma says that for any two different strings, s1 and s2, of length at most l plus 1, if you choose a random hash function from the polynomial family by selecting a random value of x, parameter x, from 1 to p minus 1, you can select a random hash function from the family. So if you select a random hash function from the polynomial family, then the probability of collision on these two different strings is at most L divided by p. So that doesn't seem like a good estimate because L can be big, but actually it is your power to choose p. If you choose very, very big prime number p, then L over p will be very small. And note that it won't influence the running time of the polyhash procedure, because the running time of this procedure is big O of length of s. It only depends on the length of the string. It doesn't depend on the length of number p, more or less. So if you select a really big number p, then the probability of collision will be very small and the hash function will still be computed very fast. The idea of proof of this lemma is that the equation, polynomial equation of power L modulo prime number P has at most L different solutions X. And basically, when we consider two strings S1 and S2, the fact that the hash value for some hash function from the polynomial family is the same for these two strings means that x corresponding to our hash function is a solution of thus this kind of equation and the fact that strings are different makes sure that at least one of the coefficients of this equation is different from zero and that is essential if the strings were the same of course the value of any hash function on them will be the same but if they're different then the probability is at most l over p because there are only l or less different x for which the hash function can give the same value on these two strings 